Hey, everybody. <laughs> Four minutes. Anybody there yet? Hi, Shana. How you doing? Megan, how's it going? Thanks for stopping in. If you can hear me, let me know. Hi, Ashley. Donna Brown. Laura, how you doing? Kim, hi. Grace, how's it going? Okay. That's three minutes. Hey, Grace. Oh, gotta scroll down. Thank you. Thanks for all the compliments, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Laura, Jennifer. Lisa, Rebecca, hi. Brandy, Brady, I'm sorry, Brady. Jennifer, hi. Who else is here? Erica, hi. Jordan and Sydney from Central Elementary School in Warren, New Jersey. Thomas, Indiana, hi Thomas. Thanks for tuning in. Avery and James from Mount Horeb School. I remember that school. Okay, Liliana, hi. Nicholas and Jason, thanks for coming. Hi to everybody who's tuning in. <clears throat> okay, we'll start in how many minutes? Uh, ooh, two minutes, two minutes. Okay. <clears throat> See who else is tuning in here today? Dominic. From Portland, Oregon. Hi, Dominic. And uh, Drew and Zach and uh, oh, it's Chloe, Casey, and Sophie. Hi. Uh, uh, let's see who else is here. Sean from Branchburg, New Jersey. Thanks for coming. We got one minute to go. Well, then we'll start. Jason Madison. Hi from Freehold. Okay, cool. If you missed the first broadcast, uh, it's still here on my Facebook fan page. You can read it anytime you want, uh, the first two. Okay, we've got one minute to go. Whew, excited. <clears throat> okay, about to get started. The clock is ticking down. It's so exciting. One fifty nine. You guys nervous? I'm nervous. <laughs> so the third time I'm doing this, I'm still a little bit nervous. But it's fun too. And we'll do it next week. We'll start a new book next week. I don't know which book to do. I'll figure that out. It's two o'clock. Hi everybody. Dan Gutman here. I'm the author of the My Weird School series. And we've been having fun on Facebook Live this week, reading from my brand new book, uh, Miss Blake is a that came out a couple of weeks ago. And so far in the story, uh, AJ and the gang uh, have joined the Beaver Scouts. And they're really excited to be Beaver Scouts until they meet Miss Blake, who's like a real mean, gruff lady. She's not very nice. And she, she's so tough, she told them she punched out a bear <laughs> in the woods when she saw it. And uh, she's been teaching the kids all kinds of survival skills that they can use if they're ever in the wilderness. And it just so happens they're going to need those skills because now they're about to go on a sleepover in the forest, in the woods. And that's how we're going to start with chapter seven, which is titled The Middle of Nowhere. Okay, you guys ready? Get, get everybody into the room, all right? And tell your friends. All right, here we go. Chapter 7. It rained all week. I thought our overnight might be canceled, 
but on Friday, my parents got a call saying it was on. They drove me to the parking lot where all the kids were waiting on the bus. Can I come on the bus to take a few pictures, my mom asked. No parents allowed, Miss Blake barked. Say goodbye. My mom said goodbye and I climbed on the bus. I sat next to Ryan. We had already decided that we were going to share a tent together. Miss Blake stood up in the front of the bus as we pulled out of the parking lot. This is gonna be fun, she barked. Anybody who doesn't have fun will be punished. We drove a million hundred miles to some forest. Finally, the bus pulled off to the side of the road and we got out. There was a sign that warned about forest fires, poison ivy, flash floods, dehydration, and other scary stuff that can happen to you in the wilderness. Are we going to go spelunking, asked Alexia. No, we hike, barked Miss Blake as she grabbed a big backpack and a pair of binoculars. I love hiking in nature, said Andrea. Ugh, hiking in nature are boring. Keep an eye out for bears and other wild animals, said Miss Blake. I'm scared, said Emily. It would have been cool to see a bear or some other wild animal, but there weren't any animals. There were just lots of trees and rocks and birds. So Miss Blake talked about every tree, rock, and bird along the way. What a snooze fest. Look, Miss Blake shouted, peering through her binoculars, a red-billed nuthatch. A bird is a bird, if you ask me. You've seen one bird, you've seen them all. I hope we see a snake, said Michael. Snakes are cool. What would you do if you saw a snake, Ryan asked. I'd punch its face in, I said. After five minutes of hiking, I was bored. Nature is way overrated. We were in the middle of nowhere. It would be cool if there was a town called Nowhere. Then you, you could go to the middle of it. Nobody ever goes to the edge of nowhere. This looks like the place where we started, said Neil. That's because we hiked a big loop, barked Miss Blake. What? So we walked a million hundred miles in a circle? What was the point of that? If you're gonna hike, you should hike someplace different. This looks like a good spot to set up our camp said Miss Blake. Let's pitch our tents here. Why would you want to throw a tent? That made no sense at all. Where do you think Miss Blake got those tents? Ryan asked. From rent a tent, I told him. You can rent anything. Ryan and I put our tent together while Miss Blake tied a string across two long sticks and stuck the sticks into the ground. Then she told us to gather up some wood. Are we going to build a fire? asked Andrea. No, we're going to build two fires, said Miss Blake. She tied another string across two sticks and stuck them into the dirt next to the first ones. One for the boys and one for the girls. Who can tell me what you need to start a fire? Lighter fluid, I shouted. No, said Miss Blake. Lighter fluid is for wimps. Fuel? air and heat shouted andrea who remembers everything she ever heard saw or read that's right said miss blake you have air all around of course i'll give the boys team and the girls team three napkins each that's your fuel and you get one match to provide the heat okay you didn't know there would be audio visual aids right <clears throat> uh, each team will build their fire under a rope. The first team to break their rope with the flame is the winner. Yes, boys against girls. Beating Andrea would be fun. I know how to build a fire, Andrea told Emily and Alexia. We should carefully make a frame out of sticks and then light the napkins at the bottom. They're wasting their time, I whispered to the guys. Just light the napkins and start piling sticks on top. Our fire will burn faster and we'll beat the girls. Ryan lit the match. 
Michael had the, held the napkins on the ground. Neil and I put thin sticks on top of the napkins. They started to catch fire. Burn, 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 we chanted as we piled more sticks on top. Everybody chant. Burn, burn, burn. Our fire was getting bigger. The girls finally finished building their dumb stack of sticks and lit it. The flames shot up so it was almost as high as ours. Our fire got higher, and so did the girls' fire. In a few minutes, the flames were almost up to the two ropes. You couldn't tell which rope was going to break first. You should have been there. There was electricity in the air. Well, not exactly. It was just fire. If there was electricity in the air, we would have all been electrocuted. But we were all in, on the edge of our seats. Well, not really. There are no seats in the forest. Here's a picture for you guys. Okay, isn't this exciting? <laughs> but it was exciting. Both flames were licking the ropes. Burn, 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 everybody chanted. Smoke was coming off the ropes. Both of the ropes were burning. Burn, burn, burn. And then the girl's rope broke. No! A second later, our rope broke. Yay, shouted all the girls. Boo, shouted all the boys. Well, that's chapter seven. Are you ready for chapter eight? Okay, here we go. Chapter eight. This is getting really exciting now. Chapter eight is titled, The Universe is Boring. <laughs> Okay, I had to admit the girls won the campfire contest fair and square. When both fires died down a little, Miss Blake got hot dogs from her backpack and we cooked them. Yum! Then she got out a bag of marshmallows for us to toast. Double yum! I ate so many marshmallows, I thought I was going to throw up. It was the greatest night of my life. It was getting dark out. Miss Blake said she was going to rest in the tent, but we could spread our sleeping bags on the ground and talk for a while. We were all lying on our backs, looking up at the sky. It was filled with stars, and it was weirdly quiet. There were no cars, no TVs, no noise. Here's a picture. Isn't this peaceful, asked Emily. Yeah, everybody replied. What do you see when you look up at the stars? Asked Andrea. I see stars, said Ryan. Maybe we'll see a shooting star, said Michael. Just think, said Andrea, said Andrea. Those stars are billions of miles away. If the sun exploded, we wouldn't know it for eight minutes. That's how long it would take for the light to reach our eyes. I'm scared, said Emily. The universe is so big, said Alexia. Where do you think it ends, asked Neil. Nobody knows, said Ryan. Maybe it never ends, said Michael. It can't go on forever, said Andrea. It's got to end somewhere. What a snooze fest. All this talk about the universe was boring. Hey, let's tell ghost stories, I suggested. Ghost stories are cool, way cooler than talking about the universe. I'm scared, said Emily. Don't be scared, said Andrea. Ghost stories are just stories. They're not real. I'll start, I said, sitting up so everybody could see me. I picked up my flashlight and held it under my chin, pointing at my face. Anytime you hold the flashlight under your chin in the dark, it looks like you're crazy. That's the first rule of being a kid. Here's a picture. <laughs> okay, I said, here's the story. There was this boy. Yeah, everybody said. <clears throat> and he was out in the woods on an overnight, I said, lowering my voice to a whisper, like us. Yeah, and it was pitch dark, just like now. Yeah, what 
happened next? asked Andrea. A ghost came along and murdered him, I said. The end. That's your story? asked Andrea. It's a short story, I told her. I cut out all the boring parts. Dude, that ghost story was lame, said Michael. I said that if nobody liked my ghost story, they could tell a ghost story of their own. And somebody would have. But that's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. There was a noise behind us. We turned around. It was... A bear. <laughs> All right, that's the end of chapter eight. Are you ready for chapter nine? Should I continue? What's the magic word? <laughs> okay, all right. Here comes chapter nine. And chapter nine is titled, Bear Attack. Oh, this is really getting exciting now. I thought I was gonna die. Eek, we all screamed. The bear was big and black and scary. I saw it with my own eyes. Well, it would be pretty hard to see something with somebody else's eyes. But the bear was standing there, about 20 feet away, staring at us. I'm s s scared, said Emily, who had a reason to be scared for the first time in her life. We were all scared. We didn't know what to say. We didn't know what to do. We had to think fast. Miss Blake, shouted Andrea, come quick. It's an emergency. M m maybe it's a friendly bear. Alexia whispered, like Winnie the Pooh or Pat Paddington. Yeah, whispered Ryan, like Corduroy or Fozzie Bear. They're friendly. Or the Three Bears, whispered Neil, or the Care Bears, or grrrr, growled the bear as it opened its mouth and showed its big teeth. Eek, we all screamed. I could smell the bear's bad breath. I, I, I don't think it's friendly, said Ryan. Miss Blake came running out of her tent. What's going on here, she barked. I'm trying to get some. But she didn't have the chance to finish her sentence because that's when she noticed the bear. Grrr, growled the bear. Punch it in the face, Miss Blake, shouted Ryan. That's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. Miss Blake fainted. Her eyes rolled up in her head and she fell backward. Michael and Neil caught her just before she hit the ground. Eek, we all screamed. Grrr, growled the bear. What are we gonna do now? Shouted Neil. Here's a picture. <laughs> it's in the dark. <laughs> Emily. Andrea shouted, quick, climb up on my shoulders. Why, asked Ellie, oh, I'm scared. Just do it, shouted Andrea. If we make ourselves look big, it might scare the bear away. How do you know that, asked Michael. I read it in the Beaver Scout handbook, Andrea replied. We all helped Emily climb up on Andrea's back. Now spread your arms out and make lots of noise. Andrea shouted. We all started yelling and screaming and hooting and hollering. That's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. The bear turned around and walked off into the woods. We did it, Emily shouted excitedly. He's leaving. Wow, Andrea should get the Nobel Prize. That's a prize they give out to people who don't have bells. I never knew you could scare a bear away just by pretending to be big and making noise. I thought our overnight couldn't get more exciting than that. But then something even more exciting happened. I'm not going to tell you what it was. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. But you have to read the next chapter. So na 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 boo boo on you. Well, that's chapter nine. Tell you what, you guys, come back tomorrow, same time, same place. We're going to finish this book tomorrow because I know you want to be here when I read. 
So I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Isn't this fun? I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun. I'll talk to you tomorrow. And uh, now it's time to go wash your hands, okay? See you guys.